before we look at different sources of ions, uh, now we'll look at uh, ion separators and detectors. And we'll need ion source, then ions are selected or separated, it can be said mass filter, and then they are reaching detector and data process. This is general scheme of practically all mass spectrometers, with few exceptions. So detectors. Uh, there are several of them, but uh, again, the idea is that we need to make plenty of electrons out of each ion that reaches detector. So when ion reaches it, it produces electron. In turn, this electron strikes uh, the electrode with high voltage, producing several electrons. Striking the next electrode, more electrons, more, more, more. So you have avalanche of electrons uh, that is coming to the end of this multiplier. And this large number of electrons can be recorded. Different design can be done by continuous dynode electron. So ion strikes this position, produces electrons with high voltage, then more electrons striking opposite side, more electrons coming here, here, here. So you have multiplication, and as a result, you have avalanche of electrons that can be recorded. One more design like that, one more design like that. So general principle is all the same. Ion strikes the detector, produces signal of numerous electrons. Now ion dies in this collision. So that's why mass spec is not spectroscopy. That actually molecule that decomposes during the experiment. Now, how ions can be separated? Uh, the most understandable, to my opinion, is time of flight design. You have your ions of different masses and sizes sitting on start from big to small. Now, there is voltage between these two electrodes. So positive ions are attracted to negative voltage. Energy gain will be charge of ion multiply by this voltage, which is potential. Now, this energy will be kinetic energy of our ion. So electrical energy is converted to energy of movement of ion. Kinetic energy from general physics, you may remember, is mass by velocity squared divided by two. Now, we can write that kinetic energy is equal to potential energy gained at this gap. So mv squared divided by 2 is equal to z multiplied by v, or velocity squared is 2z multiplied by voltage and divided by m, or taking square root, of course positive, Velocity is square root of 2z voltage divided by mass. Now, time that it takes for ion to come from source to detector is a length divided by velocity. So, length is fixed, of course, and the same for each ion. And dividing by v, we need to put it upside down. And then look, voltage is constant, 2 is constant. 
and length of course is the same for everything so time will be constant multiply by square root of ratio m to z that's what we'll measure so ions with larger mass will be slower heavy guys are traveling slower reasonable uh, the actual design will be something like that uh, all this should be of course in vacuum so our ions will not be having any collisions ions will come from this source area fly to the top of the instrument and then reflection occurs you have electrostatic mirrors so direction of light is changed to opposite and the ions are flying back along the same distance and reaching detector thus increasing the length of light twofold to have good resolution you still need to have long fly ends so the instrument is large and it has lots of empty space and precise electronics and it's crazy expensive anyway it can do you exact mass measurements in some best cases down to earth if you want only to have mass numbers the best source will be quadruple quadruple is small you can see that it can be taken it can be mechanically cleaned so how does it work uh, this is an example you have electron ionization source here so you have electrons striking your molecules to make ions and then ions are entering this quadruple flying through it to detector the distance is around uh, 30 25 centimeters sometimes 15 centimeters now uh, there is specific voltage on each of these electrodes two positives two negatives that's why it's quadruple and this is oscillating voltage the physics is designed in such a fashion that only one mass can reach detector at each specific moment when frequency of oscillation changes it will be different mass that can reach the detector so we scan masses for example from 50 to 500 mass numbers and uh, in less than one second we have mass spectrum with resolution of around one half of atomic unit maybe slightly better this is relatively inexpensive design a uh, similar design is iron trap again you can see it's reasonably small uh, unit so ions are coming in this trap and again it oscillates in voltage here that keeps them with only one type of ions at each moment with only one mass can reach detector at each particular time as a result you scan and you have a picture exactly the same as with quadruple far more sophisticated trap is orbit trap relatively new achievement a uh, little bit more than 10 year old when ions are coming inside uh, they rotate with frequency uh, that is uh, proportional to square root of value that is reciprocal to mass and proportional to q instead 
here it's Q instead of Z. So anyway, frequency of this oscillation depends on mass of I. This frequency can be recorded. Uh, the trap itself, as you see, comparative to quarter, is a very small one. Uh, but it's precise mechanics and precise electronics. Uh, the design will be like that. From iron source, uh, the ions are traveling here through quadruple. Uh, there is one more iron trap, so th th there are a couple of traps in the way, making press selection. Then ions are coming into orbit trap, where the spectrum is recorded. The original signal you can see uh, is a fantastically complex signal with millions of data points and then uh, mathematical transform of these gives you mass spectrum with resolving power of around 100,000 or resolution of 10 ppm. So you have three digits after dot, which is sufficient to consider it exact mass. Now, what about this design before orbit trap? Uh, this is so-called tandem mass spectroscopy. Sometimes we call it MSMS. In this particular figure, it simplified MSMS without orbit trap, so it's much less expensive. How does it work? So first you have ions that are coming into first quadruple mass separator. Only one type of ions at each particular moment are coming here. Now there is second quadrupole in which collision occurs uh, with gas or with ions. As a result, our ions here fell apart into fragments and then produced daughter ions are again separated by the second quadruple mass separator. So only one type of fragments came here and it crashed and the result is it separated again. So you have MS and MS. Sometimes because there are three quadruples, triple quad. It's another name for the same. So you have iron guide, ions are coming in, mass filter, collision cell or collision chamber, and then the second. Selectivity of such instrument is fantastic. You are selecting only one type of iron but of course it can be coincidence, it can be several different ions having exactly the same mass. Then you run collision, probability that these ions with exactly the same mass but different structure will produce exactly the same product ions is very low. So you have doubled selectivity of your determination. It's a very powerful machine and it's widely used in difficult toxicology problems.